<clears throat> all right. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakwadash. All right. I want to give double honors to Elder Tahar and other apostles and elders that are in the spirit and whose labors we entered into. All right. Today's lesson is receiving good and evil from the Lord. All right. So uh, we can go through various uh, different scriptures, which I want to go through today. And I want to show you that, you know, um, in this truth, you're going to receive good and evil from um, from the Most High, man. <clears throat> now, is a certain way that he does it? And there's a reason why he does it, man. Because, uh, you know, like anything, man, the, the Most High, you know, he's the per he has a perfect balance between, you know, mercy and wrath, indignation and his uh, unfailing love, right? He 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 is the perfect balance of everything, right? So he's not all love and he's not all all wrath, you know. He's not all merciful and you know, and and, and doesn't execute his judgment, right? No, la. -a. So I'm just gonna get uh, Job chapter two verse ten, and I'm gonna start off there. It says, "But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women." So all y'all should be familiar with the uh, the story of Job. You know, basically, uh, Job was uh, being chastised by the Lord, right? And he allowed the Lord allowed Satan to go ahead and chastise him on the Lord's behalf to actually prove that Job was actually worthy. Which you know, the reason why the story of Job is in there is so that way we can learn from this, because like it says in Romans fifteen and four, these things written aforetime were written for our learning through comfort of the scriptures we might have hope. So we see that, damn, okay, why am I going through all this crazy stuff, and I'm trying to serve you, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai? Well, through comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope, right? So this is written aforetime. So it was written before. So when we read this, we see like, damn, Job went through it too. And he, and he was accounted righteous. So, okay, I understand why I'm going through stuff now. It's to be proven. It's to be tested. <laughs> you understand? <clears throat> and that's the reason why uh, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai sends that evil upon us at times, man. Right? Especially in our beginning stages of the walk. Right? Because <clears throat> Satan is trying to like sift us out of there, sift us out of the truth before we get rooted and grounded in this ministry, man. Right. So Job 2 and 10. Um, so now that you got the backstory and I'm sure most of you already know, it says, but he said unto her, thou speakest uh, as one of the foolish women speaketh, Right. Because his wife said, you know, curse. How about you curse, uh, curse God and die. Right. He said, man, you speak like a foolish woman. What shall we receive good at the hand of the most high? And shall not uh and shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. So when he said this, he did not sin by saying this. So this was right and it was true. So he said, Shut up, woman. Basically, basically he said, Man, you're a damn fool, woman. Shut up. You know what I'm saying? Shall we only receive good from the most high and not evil? So Job was wise. He understood that everything is a balance, man. All right? Now let me get that. <clears throat> So uh, Proverbs 11 and 1, and it says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. So we're going to receive good and bad, right? Over here on this side, be so lucky because what's coming to us is just nothing but good. You understand? So when we read the scriptures, we understand that what? I mean, let me get this for you real quick. <clears throat> so you saw that. So you saw that. So it says a false abomination is a... a a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his, del is his delight. So if he delights in, you know, everything being a, a just weight and balance, don't you think he himself is going to be balanced? And then also how he deals with us, right? It's going to be, you know, uh, he's going to deal with us, you know, uh, by giving us a lot of good. He's going to give us some bad too, you know, just to balance that thing out. <clears throat> so let me grab, uh, what was I about to grab? Romans. I was about to read Romans for y'all. Romans chapter 8 and verse 18, right? And it reads, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. <clears throat> so, so Paul is saying that the, 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 uh, the sufferings that we are going through now, which also proves that, yo, we're going to go through sufferings. That's why the most I put these scriptures in here. So later on in these particular times, because we're in the last days, we can look back on our forefathers, right? <clears throat> and and pred uh, I'm not sure if I'm using that right word, right? But the the point is, the people that uh, that came before us, right? We can look back on the things that they wrote and get hope and comfort from those things because, okay, 
Paul was a great man and he went through the same thing. Job was a great man and he went through the same thing. The three Hebrew boys, they went through tribulation and that fire, right? Uh, 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 the prophet Daniel, what, what he went, he went into the, uh, he went into the lion's den. He was chastised like that, but he was such a great man. So this is, so how much more us, you understand? So these, these are the things that you should, you know, be thinking upon, right? When, when, whenever you're going through, uh, uh trials and tribulations, man, because the, the heavenly father, he does send, you know, evils, man. Right. Let me grab this to prove, prove that to y'all. <clears throat> So I'm going to make it abundantly clear. This is a concept that I didn't understand back in the Christian church. And they don't teach this, right? They, 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 they teach you that all love comes from the most high. Now, yes, the most high, he does give love, right? He does give good, but he also gives good with that bad because he's balanced, right? He doesn't want to spoil us, right? What happens when you spoil children? They turn rotten, right? So Amos chapter three, verse six, it says, um, shall a trumpet be blown in the city? And the people be not afraid. So like, and the people not be afraid. Shall there be an evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? It's a rhetorical question. So of course, if there's evil in the city, the Lord have done it. Right? And look, the reason why people can't understand this, verse 7, it says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret to, unto his servants, the prophets. Right? His secret about salvation, how he operates, right? His judgments. We understand that. The world does not understand it. That's why they're still under that false ideology of Christianity, you know, and, and Buddhism and, you know, all these other type of religions, thinking that the Most High is all love, which he is not. <clears throat> he is a perfect balance. And that's that's like insulting to the to, to the Heavenly Father, thinking that he's just all one thing. No, nah, man, don't, don't, don't try to play him like that. All right. So Amos three and six, shall a trumpet be blown in the city? So when you back in ancient times, when they had it, when you had a city. You had watchmen on a tower looking to uh, see forecoming danger, right, from from invading armies and, you know, bandits and whatever, right? They would blow that trumpet to let the people in the city know that danger is coming. Dun, 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 right? They would blow that trumpet and everybody in the city would be like, damn, what the hell? Who's coming? Are they about to kill us? Right? Are, are we going to be able to defend them? The, uh, uh, fight them off? Is the Lord going to, you know what I'm saying? Like, so people, people, you know, you would get afraid when you hear that trumpet. <laughs> It says, <clears throat> shall there, so the same way that people get afraid when the trumpet is blown, automatically, whenever you blow the trumpet, people automatically get afraid. The same way it says, shall there be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? It's a rhetorical question. Because you know, when the, when a trumpet is blown in the city, you're surely going to get afraid, right? The people, in the, the people in the city are surely going to be afraid. So the same way, is there evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? Of course. All right. So the Lord, he sends evil and good, right? It's a perfect balance, right? And ultimately, now ultimately it's uh, for a reason. So let me get this Zechariah chapter 13 and 8, right? And it says, <clears throat> so start, so. No, Zechariah 13 and 8, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, say of the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, right? So this is talking about the one third and the two third, right? So two parts, meaning two thirds of our people, this is where we get the two thirds. You know, uh, saying, man, you know, two thirds of our people, six, 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 right? So when you, when you equate two thirds, right, which is a fraction into a decimal, it equates to being the number what? 66.6%. .6 so that represents six, six, six. You understand? So you ever heard about the, uh, oh yeah, the six, 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 the number of his name, right? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because 66.6% .6 of our people are going to be cut off, man. The wickedness from, uh, from Israel. Right. And it says, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, save the Lord, two parts therein. So two thirds therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. So the most high, he's going to leave that third, that remnant. Right. So that's the hundred and forty four thousand and the one third women and children and the men that couldn't make the one hundred and forty four thousand because of some reason. Maybe they were just helps. Maybe they had, you know, uh, uh, some ailments, you know, uh, in their body, you know, what I mean, where they couldn't go out in the highways and byways. Right. Because <clears throat> you heard Elder Sahar, you know. Basically, you know, and the elders and the apostles, they were saying, you know, if you can't commit yourself fully into this thing, just, you know, don't even do it, you know, because of your health for some reason. If you're not going to be able to finish the race, don't, don't, don't even, you know, don't even touch it. Don't, don't even touch the plow. You know, just be a help or something like that. Right. You know, give alms, give rides or something. You know what I mean? So it says, and I will bring the third part. So that one third, this is the most high saying. He says, uh, 
and I will bring that third part through the fire and will refine them as gold as silver is refined. So how is the, uh, the most high is going to refine people? Right. So that one third is talking about a group of people. Right. So he's going to refine them as silver is refined. How is silver refined? Right. Through the fire. It says and will try them as gold is tried. How? In the fire. Right. It says they call on they, they will they shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my uh, my power, man. All right. So the point is, how is the most high going to refine the one third to fire to that furnace of adversity? Right. So it likens uh, uh, the fire that gold, gold and silver is refined and tried through uh, uh, to, the, to the furnace of adversity. So adversities, that's what we have to go through. Trials and tribulations. Right. Different temptations that we have to fight. Was not Job tempted to go off? He could he could have listened to his wife. Oh, curse the most high and die. Right. No. OK. Well, he could have he could have he got tempted to do that. Did he did he fall into it? No. Therefore, he proved himself to be gold. You understand? By staying faithful unto the end. So let me grab that. <clears throat> so I write chapter two and one. It says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So is temptation a lot like like most times. Is it a good thing? No. Right. Because we're tempted when, when, when you when you're tempted, you're tempted to, to uh, actual actually sin to go off to offend. Right. To, to sin against who? The most high. Right. So it says the most high is telling us to prepare our souls for temptation. When we come into this ministry, it says, set thy heart aright. So your heart is your mind. That's the Hebrew word, la'ab, which means mind and constantly endure. So we have to constantly endure when you got to constantly endure something. That means there's going to be some tribulations, man. Right. It's going to be some evils. Right. It says, and make not haste in time of trouble. So when you're when you're when you're in trouble, don't be hasty. Job could have been hasty and said, you know what, fuck it. You know, uh, I'm done with all this. Right. No, don't be hasty. Cleave unto him. So, oh, there you go. Right. Verse three, cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at that last sin. So don't be hasty to do something that's going to cause you to sin in that time of trouble to fall into that temptation. No. And, and that time you want to be cleaving unto Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. You want to be calling on those names. Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, man. Right. The father. Right. Uh, and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, who was our king, who was our Lord, king of all the earth, king of Israel. Right. Verse four says, whatsoever is born upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient with our change to a low estate. This is the point <clears throat> right here as well. It says, verse five, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So you're going to receive good and bad from the heavenly father, man. And it is all for the purpose of uh, uh, trying you so that way you be that, way, that you will be found as gold, Salakia. <clears throat> that you will be better. You'll be stronger, right? So we're going to receive good and bad from the Most High, man. And it's all for the purpose of building up His elect, man. That one third. So did it say He's going to put the two thirds to the furnace of, uh, of adversity? No, man. They're not even going to get a chance to come into this thing, man. Right? Well, some of them are, because you'll understand that some people will actually. Uh, be uh you know claiming themselves to be israelites and they'll be a part of the two-thirds as well so uh i, I recant from that last statement <clears throat> so yeah there will be some uh israelites that are in the truth that will be a part of the two-thirds as well all right because they'll uh they'll fold at the end or or fall out or give up that uh that faith throughout their uh journey let me see where else i want to go with this yeah let me grab another one for you uh, the book of Psalms, right? Chapter 78, damn. The book of Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 49. And it reads, He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble, right? By sending evil angels among them. So <clears throat> how how is the most high? You know, sending uh, uh, different troubles uh, upon us through through these evil angels, angels on the left hand side and angels on the right angels on the right hand side. They, so so let me explain. Right. So you have evil angels. Does this mean that they're wicked and, you know, just sinister? No, they're all doing the will of the heavenly father. The angels, they, they, they don't sin. Right. So when I say evil angels, I mean, the angels, when it says evil angel, angels right here is talking about angels that hand out. The judgments from the Heavenly Father, they handle his dirty work. So if the Heavenly Father wanted to, wants to take out 2,000 people from Haiti, 
He sends those so-called evil angels. The only reason why it's written evil angels in here is so that way you can understand what it's actually talking about. Right? Because everybody has this um this mindset, oh, angels, man, yeah, they only do good. They only do good. No, it's it don't work like that. They just do the will of the Heavenly Father. Right? Now, is the Heavenly Father justified in killing two thousand wicked people in an earthquake? Yes, he is. You understand? So they're just handing out the handing out the judgments because frankly every one of us should be dead you understand it's only by his mercy and his uh and his grace that we're that we're still living you know by shim yahweh shai because yeah you know what yahweh shai did for us covering uh covering us by his blood man so the point is those angels on the left hand side those evil angels they handle out his uh, uh it says right here the fierceness of his anger wrath and indignation and his trouble right the things that he want to place upon people for not doing you know what he requires of them and then also those evil angels uh, like I've explained throughout this whole lesson, those angels angels handle out the trouble and the testing of the elect to prove that they're gold, right? So it's not to destroy us, right? Because you'll see with Job, right? Let me go ahead and grab that. Did the Most High, when, 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 when Job went through his test, did the Most High allow Satan to destroy Job? He said, no, you can do whatever you want to him, just don't kill him, right? So and the Most High won't give you more than you can handle. It's just that Job, he could he handled a lot more. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> and he was that example for a lot of brothers because there's a lot of brothers that go through many different things. So, you know, with Job, it touched a lot of different things like skin ailments, right? Losing your money, losing your family, you know, losing your wife. There's a whole bunch of things, losing your property, whatever, right? Friends turning on you, all this stuff, man. Some of us may go through one or two of those things or maybe one. You see what I'm saying? But it's, it's something in there for everybody. You see what I'm saying? That, that, you know, that we all can get touched by. So this is the point. Uh, the Most High, he won't allow Satan to, to uh, take us out. So let me get Job 1 and 6, right? <clears throat> I'm going to read this in the NLT for y'all. It says, Job's first test. One day, the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord, and the accuser, Satan, came with them. So this is how you know. Also, to those people uh, in the Christian church who are still under the belief that uh, there was a war in heaven and Satan was fighting against the Most High, that don't make no sense. Because if he was fighting against the Most High and he was cast out of heaven, how did he come back with the host of heaven, right, and talk with the Most High if he was cast out? You think enemy is about to sit here and just rap? Uh, rap? And you think one enemy is going to ask the other enemy for permission to, you know, to tempt somebody? Come on now. Don't make sense, man. So it says, one day the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord and the accuser Satan came with them. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord. I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's, go that, that's, slaki, that's going on. Verse eight. Then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the fine. So who did it come from? He said, yo, check out my servant Job. So the Lord wanted to test Job. So these tests come from, from the Lord, but Satan, which we know is a left-handed angel, right? On the left-hand side, handling out the judgments, right? From the Heavenly Father that, that, that he wants to bestow upon people, right? He's he's telling Satan to go ahead and test his servant Job. It was Job evil? Did, did he want to punish Job? No, he was trying to test him, right? So it's the same thing with us, right? So it says, then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears the most high and stays away from evil. Satan replied, yes, but uh, but Job has good reason to fear the most high. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look, look how rich he is. But reach out now and take away everything he has and he will surely curse you to thy face to your face. All right, you may test him. So he, the Most High, allowed the Most uh, uh to, to uh, the Most High allowed Satan to go ahead and test Job. The Lord said to Satan, "Do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically." So Satan left the presence, the Lord's presence. So they was a, they was he was in heaven. And where does the Most High sit? The Most High never moves off his throne, right? So Satan had to be go cool before the Heavenly Father. You understand? So that proves that Satan was not cast out of heaven, because if you were cast out of somewhere, that means you cannot return. Right. So I just wanted to, you know, uh, hit y'all with this, man. You know, you know, we uh, we're not going to just receive good from the Heavenly Father. We're going to receive good and bad. Right. So we, we have to understand this. We got to get out of that mindset. If something bad happens, 
you know, of course, that, you know, sometimes we receive judgment from the Heavenly Father for the wrong things that we do. But also, a lot of times it's chastisement and there's and it's test, right? To see if we're going to stick with the Heavenly Father, right? A lot of times when you got different things going on, you know, uh, drama start or, you know what I mean, you know, um, just everything's working smooth for a while, you know, <sighs> here comes Satan rearing his ugly head, stirring up different, you know, emotions and people and different things. You know, it happens, man, right? And we have to understand, you know, what it is and, you know, uh, uh, and just move on, you know, just keep fighting. Just keep fighting. You know, understand it. Yo, all right, this is Satan trying to cause this and that, you know, trying to stir up something, you know, or, uh, you know, trying to distract me from doing what's right because brother's been going, going hard. Right. Yeah, man. You know, we understand that this is this is this is the enemy rearing his ugly head. We got to continue to fight. And push through. And the most high, once he sees that we're proven worthy, right? He's gonna he's gonna uh he's gonna uh uh increase us, right? It says verse verse three, it's I read two and three, cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. So you just hold down for the heavenly father and you cleave unto him when everything uh uh bad is going on, and the heavenly father he's gonna increase you right at the end. He's just proving you right now. Right. As uh, as silver is refined and as gold is tried in the furnace of adversity. Right. So I hope that you Akim and Akwathim were edified. It's like your Akim and Akwath were edified, exhorted and comforted. And with that, I want to say Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Barakathum. Right. Give all honor, glory and praise unto Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rakakwadas. Shalom.